Is hydrogen about to change the world we live in? Is it really the green energy source everyone is searching for? So hydrogen becomes the universal fuel of the future. It's a new chapter, we need to turn the page. Challenging the status quo, you know, thinking the unthought, do the undone. Mobility revolution means rethinking the whole system. And then you reach that tipping point where you say, OK, there's no way back now. In June this year, Germany's parliament approved the government's national hydrogen strategy, greenlighting 9 billion euros to help make hydrogen a key sustainable energy. We've drawn up an economic package that is clearly not just a Band-Aid, it's a plan for our future. And that gave us the chance to push forward with our hydrogen strategy and bolster it with enough money to make sure it works. At last, I thought. I think we're ready to go. At last, our politicians understand. I was applauding. I was, we were all emotionally blown away and moved. In July, the EU followed Germany's lead and passed a European hydrogen strategy to speed up the deployment of hydrogen energy technology across the bloc. It means that our mobility will not be completely dependent upon battery cell technology. That's an area where we lag behind. It's a moment that Sibylle Rieper has long waited for. She and the organization H2 Mobility have been championing hydrogen cars for the last five years. I think Germany has fallen far too far behind in terms of batteries, and the fuel cell gives us a big opportunity to get back in front. The National Hydrogen Strategy lays out a plan for Germany to become a world leader in the development and deployment of hydrogen fuel resources. The technology converts liquid hydrogen in a vehicle's fuel cell into electricity that powers a motor. The biggest advantage is refueling. 500 kilometers of range can be refilled in just five minutes at the pump. The average pure electric vehicle will need at least 45 minutes to charge for a similar range. But there's another challenge. At the moment, the only hydrogen cars on the German market are made by Toyota and Hyundai. German car makers have developed hydrogen vehicles, but they're not yet prepared to mass produce them. We need to see more progress before we go into mass production. We don't have the hydrogen infrastructure that our customers would need in Germany, in Europe and across the world. That's something Sibylle Riepe and H2 Mobility have been trying to change. Though there are only around 800 hydrogen cars in Germany, the firm backed by a consortium of big industry players is aiming to install 100 filling stations. Germany is the best in Europe in terms of hydrogen filling stations, so you can't say it's an infrastructure problem. Few people know the dynamics of the mobility revolution as well as David Wenger. For the past 15 years, his engineering and marketing firm has been helping companies around the world prepare for the challenges ahead. One of the big issues is these political incentive packages are less than perfect, in my opinion. The EU requires that each car maker produces vehicles with an average CO2 emission of 95 grams per 100 kilometers. There are heavy fines for each breach of the limit. A big SUV might emit 280 grams of CO2, but the car maker can cancel that out by selling zero emission EVs, which count double in the equation so they can keep making gasoline or diesel SUVs alongside the cleaner models. I do everything I could to avoid confusing people who want to buy a new car, otherwise they might push off their purchase for one or two more years. And if car makers brought a lot of hydrogen cars onto the market, it could stop more people buying pure electric cars. But the biggest opportunity for hydrogen fuel cells is in long distance and heavy transport, such as trucks, airplanes and ships. 
We are absolutely focused on hydrogen. In terms of the advances and innovation of the last few years, there has never been such an exciting time. And the national strategy goes even further. The core idea is that there is also an industrial strategy. That means we are not just looking at vehicles, we are primarily looking at how we can use hydrogen to solve our CO2 issues, for example, in the steel industry. Hydrogen is a key energy resource in many industrial processes, but until now it's been produced from natural gas, and that's mainly supplied by the Russian company Gazprom. So not only Western Europe, but the EU as a whole has this incredible political dependency. And we could break that to a certain extent by developing hydrogen extraction technologies from renewable energy that then could be deployed in other countries. Morocco and Ukraine are just two countries looking to create enough solar and wind power to run large-scale green hydrogen production. German firms such as ThyssenKrupp and Siemens are part of the push to build electrolysis plants whose hydrogen could be brought to Europe via pipelines or container ships. So the hydrogen strategy is not just about ecology or industry. It's also key to Europe's ability to control its energy supplies. But the only hydrogen trucks on European roads are Korean. Hyundai spotted the potential of hydrogen 10 years ago and launched its range of vehicles. Japanese car makers have also got a big head start. So are Germany's ambitious plans heading for a dead end? German car makers have shareholders who expect to see dividends, and Asian companies are a lot more patient. That means they know they'll only reap profits from what they're doing now in 20 years, and that's OK for them. That's, of course, not the case with these German car makers. Their CEOs know they have to deliver results this year or next year, otherwise they're gone. But that's not the case with all German CEOs. In 2019, Gerhard Marx took over at Iveco, the commercial vehicles producer whose history is deeply intertwined with the development of heavy transport. With a sector facing an uncertain future, Marx set about reinventing the firm and, with it, the mobility of commercial vehicles. But his innovative ideas didn't go down well with the bosses of other truck makers. That changed when he rang Trevor Milton, boss of the dynamic US startup Nikola Motors. Trevor is in his late 30s, I'm in my early 40s. I think we're both more driven by changing things to the better. If it takes you 35 years to become the CEO of a company and then you have three years until you retire finally from that employer, how much vision, foresight and risk are you taking in your last term of that company? None. Nikola was founded truly in a basement. Founded in 2014, Nikola Motors has quickly caught the eye of investors with its plans for hydrogen-powered trucks in the U.S. If you thought the last four or five years was exciting, just wait until you see the next four or five years with Nikola. I think it's going to be one of the greatest stories ever told. In 2016, Nikola unveiled its first hydrogen-powered truck. And it's now making a truck for the European, Asian and Australian markets, the Nikola 3, at Iveco's German plant. This mixture, not just made in Germany but with a big international aspect, is a very attractive way of getting hydrogen trucks into operation. Two humble fighters who had an idea of changing something to the better and who had, to be honest, nothing to lose. The new vehicle is based on Iveco's most modern truck, the S-Way, which runs on diesel or LPG. The cooperation between Gerhard Marx and Trevor Milton has set the stage for a battle with Tesla and Elon Musk, who pioneered the use of pure electric battery technology in their trucks. Can the Nikola Iveco hydrogen truck compete? And does Tesla's battery-driven Cybertruck have anything to fear from Nikola's hydrogen-fueled Badger pickup? Even if it looks like a battle for the huge markets of the future, the Iveco boss insists it's about more than just profits. The joy of a quarterly earning is gone the day after you reported it. 
the joy or the, let's say, um, the pleasure you take in doing something that lasts and changes the world is something that actually lasts for longer. It's unusual to hear the head of a truck maker vowing to do the undone, think the unthought. But these are unusual times. Maybe hydrogen really is the way to a better future.